Welcome everybody back to R&B Homestead. I want to thank you for coming back and joining me on this journey from my apartment to my homestead. Today we're going to talk about what I'm planning in February in Zone 7A. So make sure you get your books ready. Make sure you hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the button. Also make sure you hit that bell notification that so every time I post a video that you get notified also make sure to give this a thumbs up and share this with your family and friends. So let's get into the video. So hi, we're back. And so I'm going to go ahead and talk about week two and what I'll be planning. And when I say week two, it'll probably be within the next couple of days of that week. Because again, February is dwindling down, um, but because it's the shortest month of the uh, year and I'm kind of behind the eight ball. Now, um, what I'm going to plant, usually I'll plant in March, um, my fruits, but I'm going because I'm planting indoors and I'm planting in containers. I'm going to do them a little early. Yes, I know. Don't shoot me. We're going to try it and see what happens. If not, I'll start all over again. So some of the fruits that I'm going to be trying to grow in containers. Now, mind you, they're going to be in containers. Um, strawberries, guava. You know, I have a blueberry tree, two of them. Um, blackberry, cranberries, a black cherry tree, red raspberries, kiwi, and I got a kumquat tree that's coming and a Myers lemon tree. Um, both of them are quote unquote dwarf, but if you trim them when you get them, you can trim them to where they stay small. So yes, I can grow them on my balcony because I can trim them to make them stay small and put them in the little corners that I have on my balcony to make sure they get the appropriate sun and I get the wonderful fruit that comes with them. So going on to the next set of uh, items I'll be planting in my little planters inside. Uh, we're going to move from the herbs and of course I told you about the fruits because some of them I do have seeds like the strawberries and raspberries but some of them I also have little plants like the blueberries I have a little plant, kiwi, um, gooseberries. I have some, a gooseberry uh, tree that I got from Home Depot. Um, they run you about $9.99 so I'm going to try my thumb at that. Um, some of this is some new stuff that I'm doing, but I want to try it and I'm going to bring you along so you can see. So when I get on to my homestead and I have my different orchards, I know what I'm good at growing. Um, I'm one of those people I like to try everything. So if I say I don't like something, you know I don't like it because I tried it. So um, what I'm going to be growing um, after my herbs, I'm going to be growing garlic cauliflower, broccoli, um, turnips, uh, radish, and that's what I'm going to be growing because right now I, I, I'll, have, I'll have a whole plate full going on. So let's talk about these, these things that I'm going to plant. Now, mind you, um, when I'm planting certain things, I'm planting certain varieties, and yes, it's just me, but I have family, friends, and again, like I said, I, I sell at the farmer's market also. So with the garlic, I'm going to put them in my uh, tin. I have some 10-pound grow bags that I'm going to use. And yes, I bought the garlic bulbs that are in my freezer, not my freezer, my refrigerator uh, cooling so that when I pull them out, I'll put them in the dirt. And again, I'll bring you along on that. I'll make a video of um, showing you how to grow your own garlic. Um, the cauliflower, I'm going to do the snowball and the twister versions. Let me see if I can find them on this table. Here they go. So I'm gonna be doing, I got it from Hoss. And yes, Dollar Tree is your friend, Caesar Seeds. But yes, um, I'm going to be growing the snowball and the twister. So they both uh, germinate within 7 to 10 days, but your twisters, 
usually take a little bit longer to harvest, about 75 days. This is why um, with me being in grow, grow Zone 7A that I'm starting all this inside because, and I can because it takes so long for this stuff to harvest. And again, these, once they, I take them out and transport them, they're going to go into my little grow bags that I have or little pots of their own. So what's next? It's broccoli. So broccoli, we're going to again have a couple of, I don't know if that's my turnips. We're going to have some broccoli. Here go my broccoli. So broccoli, I'm going to be planting. I'm going to have the Waltham, the Sun King hybrid, and they all germinate within 10 to 14 days, except the Sun King. The Sun King takes up to 21 days, and it actually, you can harvest the Sun King within 71 days, but the other form of broccoli usually take, takes 90 days. So you're looking at if I plant these inside, they're, they're, you're not, they're not gonna be ready to harvest till probably May. But by that time, they'll be outside. Also said I'm gonna do turnips. Turnips and radishes actually are, um, they germinate both at the same, not the same time, but they germinate within five to 10 days, the turnips and the radish. I think I'm only doing two types of turnips and four or five different variants of the radishes because um, some of them are, I wanna consider them mini, but then I also got the traditional like champions um, radishes. Most of the radishes grow, germinate within seven to 14 days and anywhere from 22 to 30 days, you can go ahead and harvest these babies. And turnips, on the other hand, you're looking at the five to 10 days to germinate, but it usually takes about 40 days before you can harvest them. So we've gotten our fruit and our fruit trees. We've had our um, herbs, and we also have had a couple of our vegetables planted um, within the next 10 days. And then there's part three. Like, uh, usually what happens is, is I try to plant something every week. Um, with February being a short month and me getting a slow start. Um, although I have, my plan was to plant something every week, so it's in four parts. Um, unfortunately, I can only plant, um, I'm going to have to plant a little bit sooner and not wait the whole um seven days in between planting. But I'm still going to bring you along on every video, on every herb and vegetable, tree and fruit that I plant. Because um, like I said, I wanna, I'm one of those people who like to get do step by step. And I wanna show you what works for me because you know, being in YouTube, you go out there and you look up how to grow blueberries, how to grow, I don't know, morning glories, if you want to grow flowers. And a lot of times there are no step videos. It just says, here's a seed. I planted it. Now I have blueberries. And so um, I want to make sure that uh, going in that you're able to see how I did these things. Also, it makes it a skill to learn when you're going to homestead. I don't plan on going to the store all the time. That is a game plan. So I plan on growing my own food. So for the next week, and again, wrote it all down, we're going to be growing asparagus. Now, mind you, asparagus, you cannot eat the first year you plant them. Um, they, you, you usually can only eat them the second or third year. Some people say the third year. So this is a total investment with starting asparagus. Um, artichokes, Swiss chards, um, spinach, greens. And when I say greens, I'm looking at collard greens. I don't like turnip greens or mustard greens. Um, so I won't be growing those because they grow so well. Um, I know I'll have a lot of them and there's no use just going to waste because I just don't eat them. Um, also, I'll be having cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and zucchini. 
Now, mind you, everyone says always grow only what you eat. But you remind you that I sell at the farmer's market. So even though I don't eat certain things, like I don't eat Brussels sprouts. But um, I found a recipe with some garlic and some other seasoning that's supposed to make them wonderful. So we'll try that. But for that week, that's what we'll be growing. So like I said before, the asparagus you cannot eat. They're not, they're not you, you can't harvest them and they're not edible the first year you grow them. And again, like I said, I'll be going into a video to you know show you and tell you why that's not possible. Um, next is artichokes. Artichokes take about 10 to 20 days to germinate. And where are you little artichokes? I think I'm only gonna do one variant of the artichoke because again, like I said, I don't really eat artichokes, but I sell them at the fruit market, at the farmer's market rather. So these take about 85 to 120 days to germinate. Then you have your Swiss chards, which take about seven to 10 days to germinate. And then it takes about within a month or two, you can go ahead and harvest your Swiss chards. Um, spinach, I use spinach in my smoothies. Smoothies are wonderful. That's a side note. But spinach um, usually takes seven to 14 days to germinate, and then you can harvest them within 48 days. So you can eat your regular spinach, um, a lot of things I use in um, smoothies to make sure that I get my vitamins. So spinach is one of those things that I love. Spinach and kale. Um, I'm not, I don't eat kale, like just to eat it in a salad or something. So I definitely use all my kale in my smoothies. Some people call them mean greens, but you know, I add other stuff to them and they're wonderful. So with um, collard greens, collard greens, I'm gonna do some bats and some uh, champions. I was unable to find my Georgia, one, Georgia collard greens, like those big leafy ones that are so beautiful. So if anybody knows where I can get those, leave me a message and um, so I can get me some of the Georgia collard greens. But usually your, your greens, they're, they take about five to 14 days to germinate and about 60 days to, before you can harvest them depending on the brand, but most of them are 60 days. Then we have your cabbage. Where are my cabbage? These are my Brussels sprouts right here. Cabbage is around somewhere on this table of seeds. It's like an addiction. It's like I go into the store. First of all, I should stay out of Home Depot. That's, I just, I really should stay out of Home Depot. And then the dollar store, like the containers from the seeds to, it's just, you know, an addiction but um, the cabbage usually takes about 10 to 15 days to germinate and you're looking at 60 to 65 days for the harvest you have your Brussels sprouts and your zucchini zucchini takes about 50 days before you can harvest it even though it takes only about five days to germinate and the Brussels sprouts take now the Brussels sprouts take about 21 days to um, germinate and it takes about three and a half months before you're actually able to harvest your Brussels sprouts. So now we're almost to the end. Um, I made this a very long video because this is going to be a two-part video if you didn't know uh, what I'm harvesting. Matter of fact, it's not going to be two-part. You can just go ahead and fast forward it through to see what I'm planting. But you know, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you you know, just hit that, go ahead and write that below. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. There's on the subscribe button. But that final week in February, what I'm going to be planting is as follows, onions. Now onions, I have seeds. I also have the bulbs. Um, I'm going to do um, a whole lot of variances of onions. Um, I don't eat per, onions per se raw but I love the flavor of onions. And for someone who doesn't like onions or doesn't like texture, I'm a texture eater um, when it comes to foods. You can grind them up and have them in, uh, to make them into a uh, seasoning. So we're, we're gonna do a video on dehydrating also. So I'm gonna have a whole lot of different onions. Of course, your lettuce, your, your butter crunch, and um, things usually um, with lettuce you it takes about seven to 20 days to germinate depending on the type i have found 
and you're looking at about 75 days, 65, 75 days before you can harvest your lettuce. And again, lettuce is one of those uh, leafy greens like kale. They love the quote unquote cold weather. Um, side note, which I didn't tell you about kale, is that a lot of people don't know that kale, depending on um, what, when you grow it, it can have a sweeter taste than um, if you grow it at different times. Um, the next thing we're gonna be doing is growing some carrots. And I'm not going to be growing you, I guess your traditional carrots, because I'm going to do the Danvers half and the cordless because they're not the very long, long, long carrots, but they can be used in your salads or however you uh, use your carrots. Um, and again, a lot of this stuff, you're thinking like, Clay Robin, you don't like a whole lot of vegetables and things, but I sell at the farmer's market and a lot of the stuff you can use to make salsa and coleslaw. And if you're from Cleveland, Ohio, you know that you have to have your coleslaw for your Polish boy. Side note. So the next thing is beans. Now there are lots of types of beans and I'm going to grow them all because I like them all. Um, green beans are my favorite. I love green beans. Um, but I'm going to do some black eyed peas, which are cow peas. I'm going to try some light and dark kidney beans for the first time. I'm going to do navy, pinto, and lima beans because again, all these beans can be used one to eat uh, for um, with rice and whatever. But what people don't know is that you can actually take these, these beans and once you harvest them, you can seal them in your mylar beds and put them away for storage and they will store for years. So I'm going to have all these beans. Like I said, Great Northern, um, Pinto, Navy, Black Eyed Peas. Of course, I'm going to have my bush beans. I'm not gonna do too many pole beans. I might do one pole bean variance, but that's about it. Because again, I'm growing in the containers and I'm growing on limited uh, space. Then we're celery. Now, I wanna grow celery, but for some reason, again, I can't seem to find any celery seeds. So, if you know where I can get them, make sure you comment below so I can go ahead and go and get them. Um, potato slips. I'm going to start my potato slips. I'm going to do a video on potato slips and sweet potato slips um, that you can uh, start. Um, they take a while as far as starting the slips and then you plant them. And again, I'll be planting them in 10 gallon uh, grow bags, uh, fabric grow, grow bags. So I'm not going to have like a 200 pound harvest of potatoes and sweet potatoes, but I'm going to have enough and I'm going to actually can some of them. So people are like, oh, you're growing all this food. What are you going to do with it? Mm, I can. I dehydrate. I use Mylar bags. Make sure you stay tuned to get all that information. Um, next are beets. And remember I told you beets actually um, harvest them within 60 days. And they take about 8 to 10 days to germinate. But you can use beets and a couple of the different herbs to make you a quote-unquote faux tomato sauce. And for someone who's allergic to tomatoes like I am, that is a great substitute. Um, peas. I know a lot of people don't like peas, but for some reason, I like peas. So I'm going to grow two variances of the peas. And they take about 60 days uh, to harvest the peas. I'm going to have some um, Little Marvel and Early Frost uh, peas that I'm going to be doing. Um, now, while I'm growing all these different fruits, herbs, vegetables, I can't forget the flowers because I need the bees, the bees to come and say, hey, Robin, let me pollinate your, your little stuff. So I'm going to do sunflowers. I'm only going to do probably have two or three. They're going to grow up in the little pot. I'm just going to have two or three because, again, I'm working on a balcony in an apartment right now. But I'm going to do some cosmos, some zinnias, and some morning glories. So here they are right here. I have the actual little containers I got from um, a Dollar Tree that the little flowers can sit in. So I'll have like little flowers 
So the bees can come and say, okay, let me go ahead and pollinate your little vegetables so that I have a nice harvest, not only to can and to dehydrate, but also to sell at the farmer's market and to give to my family and friends the extras that I have left over. And the last final things that I'm going to be growing in February, like I have, I've been, I'm thinking I'm growing like 500 million things in February to start off. It's just ridiculous. But I'm gonna do some eggplants. Um, I already said kale. Oh, leeks. If anybody knows where I can get some seeds for leeks, because again, I like those in my, um, when I'm making salsa and when I make um, like different uh, recipes that call for onions. I like leeks. Um, so I'm also gonna do a couple of different tomatoes. Now mind you, I will be wearing gloves <laughs> when I show you how I plant those because I am allergic to tomatoes. Um, Ironically enough, I'm allergic to bees too, but I need the bees to pollinate my food. So I'll just be extra, extra careful. Um, peppers. I need my peppers. Um, I'm not a spicy type of person who likes spicy food, but again, um, you can have your peppers um, that I sell at the farmer's market with the family and friends, and I'll be selling on my website, of course, um, with my natural skincare, I'll be selling uh, my sauces, my jams, my jellies, um, things that can be shipped. Uh, those will be sold on my website. But the peppers, I'm making sure I do some jalapeno, some bell peppers. And I do use a lot of bell peppers, um, especially when you're making homemade dressing. You need bell peppers. You can't slap on the bell peppers. So I will make sure that I keep some of those on deck, whether I'm freezing them or finding a way to save them for future dishes. Um, but again, I'm gonna to try to do some, some habaneros, the serranos, um, some big gin chilies, and some jalapeno pepper, peppers. So, if you stuck with me during uh, both of these videos, I have a lot of planting to do. And I make sure that I'm going to bring you on this journey with planting with me. So make sure you hit that bell notification so you're notified every time that I post a video. Make sure to also hit that subscribe button so that you can share your videos not only with um, families and friends, but sharing with everyone so that someone who's taking this journey from starting a container garden, garden in, on their balcony all the way to having property and having your own homestead would really benefit from this information. Um, I hope that you learn something. I hope that you make sure you keep your notebooks because um, they're very vital. And so, so you know what worked for you um, and what didn't work for you, what grew, what did not grow, what you needed to do differently. So as I say, always say, do not judge each day by what you harvest but by what you sow. And we'll see you again on R&B Homestead. Bye.